So today we're speaking with Stephen Rudy with uh, Kim Analytic as part of our Legend series. And Stephen, let's start off by talking about how you've been keeping busy these last few years uh, since your, your first unofficial retirement from the industry. Uh, tell us a little bit about Kim Analytic and all that it provides with the finishing industry. Yes, thank you, Tim. Actually, I have to go back to about nine months before my intended retirement. And uh, first I asked myself, well, what are you gonna do with your time? Uh, I did have projects, I have things that I do, certainly. But I noticed one thing that was very lacking with the customers that I had. Uh, they get used to the technical support. Uh, they also do not regularly have their own source of support. So I offered to them, and I, I said to a couple of companies, I think about six, mm -hmm. um, how about if I do some work for you when I retire, I'll start my own little company, and uh, you dedicate to, to me. And overwhelmingly, every one of them said, mm -hmm. absolutely, we really want you to help us. So I went to my accountant. Uh, my accountant did the groundwork for me, um, got my uh, uh, company name. Uh, it's all my own name. I got a federal tax ID number, so I was off and running. Uh, very shortly after my official retirement, lo and behold, I was, I was busy at work for my customers. <laughs> right. and, uh, it, it, Tim, it has been just totally fulfilling it's such a joy to work with people, mm -hmm. and the best part is to coincide with my customers to solve a problem or to prevent a problem. It's right. been really, uh, it's been really a boom. So I really appreciate that. Right, right, yeah. Finishing still is very much of a science, correct? I mean, people are always running into uh, issues that they have to kind of troubleshoot, and it's good to have that experience that you've had to kind of help them get through those. You've probably seen a lot of those problems before, haven't you? Oh, uh, yes, I've seen a lot of the problems. But one thing very interesting, Tim, I have to tell you, um, I've been in this industry for almost 40 years. I learn something new almost every day. It's an wow. amazing industry. There's so many different facets to the industry. There's so much to it. And um, it's a good opportunity for anyone to learn, you know, especially if you want to get into the industry. So um, basically, that's, uh, that's it. You know, what keeps us going is very interesting. And I have a very good schedule, and I have to tell you, I have over 40 customers now. So, wow, six uh, for, yeah, kind of, kind of. For one man army, you know, it keeps me very busy. Keeps you very busy. Yeah, well, let, to do. yeah well, let's go back a bit. Uh, yeah, I said you've been in the in the uh, finishing industry for a long, long time. Take us back to how you got started in this. Uh, I don't know if you were doing anything previous to that, but tell us about how you, know, how you got started in the finishing industry. Actually, it's very interesting. I think... There may be a lot of people that probably would agree with me that sometimes good things happen to you per chance, something mm -hmm. out of the blue that you're not expecting. And what happened to me was I was a chemist for a company that was manufacturing specialty chemicals to um, reduce pollution at um, fossil fuel burning power plants. Mm. And uh, at one point, the federal government began to relax the uh, laws on, on emissions. Mm. And with that, some sales dropped, and with it, people like myself were laid off. Mm. And uh, one of my old college professors, by the way, uh, always keep in good touch with people because right. they can always help you out. You can always you can help them; they can help you. So one of my professors called me and says, "Are you looking for a job?" I says, "By the way, I am." So he pointed me to call the Frederick Gum Chemical Company in Kearney, New Jersey, which I did. And um, I have to say. My ride in the industry, which has been a terrific pleasure, began at Frederick Gum Chemical in 1983. Wow. Yeah, I was going to say, great. Yeah, great. I said, I remember that. A lot of people remember that company, yes, and Mr. Gum and, and the whole company that, that was there with that. So yes. how long were you with that company then? I was with that company for 16 years, mm -hmm. and uh, there were a couple of purchases. Um, and uh, I left the company uh, when there was a uh, purchase by a larger company. I wanted to stay with a mid-sized company. Mm -hmm. And uh, in 1999, I journeyed to the Enequis Chemical Company in Brooklyn, New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was uh, gainfully employed at Enequis uh, doing technical work and uh, some sales work on the road for seven years. And uh, that all culminated to our company uh, being uh, purchased by the Hubbard Hall Company in Waterbury, Connecticut. And I came on board with Hubbard Hall, uh, where I spent the uh, final 12 years of my working career. 
Wow. Yeah, I was going to say a lot, a lot of familiar names there of all, everybody that you've you've been yes. with there. You know, one thing I always like to ask people is, is the people that have really mentored them over the years. Like I said, when you get into the industry, uh, get into your, your profession first and then get into yes. your industry. Uh, people that you've met who've really have been there. Can you mention some of those or talk about some of those that have really been instrumental, or especially early in your career of getting, uh, you know, getting started? Uh, yes, I would be happy to. Uh, first off, I have to take my hat off to Mr. Nabil Zaki, who mm -hmm. was the uh, vice president of technology at Federal Gov Gov Chemical Company. He interviewed me, and he felt it was worth taking a chance on me and hired me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll always be grateful for that opportunity to get started. Mm -hmm. And I have to also put a plug in for another gentleman, um, Mr. Larry Durney, who uh, passed yes. away years ago. Yes. But he was uh, he was an executive vice president at Federal Chemical, and this gentleman he was a smart guy. Mm -hmm. He put you to the test every day with practical problems. So uh, he was also a great mentor, and I have to mention that as I got going in Federal Chemical Company, doing uh, laboratory work, technical service, traveling to installations, I have to say um, many customers became mentors also because they planted the seed, they helped me. They helped me learn certain things mm -hmm. because they were more experienced than I was, and I appreciate that. Right. Uh, that, I, yeah. have to also, I have to also give a shout out to uh, the late, great Walter Schwartz. Mm. He, was a, uh, uh, he was a president and co-owner of the Enequist Chemical Company. Mm -hmm. Walter was a practical gentleman who knew his chemistry inside out and was so happy to uh, share that with me and also put me through some practical tests and help me along the way. And then finally, I have to give a uh, hats off to Mr. Gerard Mastro Petro, who mm -hmm. is the executive vice president at the Hubbard Hall Company mm -hmm. for taking me on and giving me the opportunity to manage a sales territory, which I really hadn't done before. So it gave me a new facet into the industry, and he helped guide me and uh, help me in this regard. So I have to say these are some people that I can name, but there are many more that I have worked with that have been fantastic. Right, right. That's great that you like, so you have so many people that were very instrumental. And I guess that helped you to kind of you yourself turn around and mentor some people that uh, you know were, were kind of getting into the industry and kind of showing them the ropes and giving them good advice because we all need that, right? I mean, we all need that kind of help down the road. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, um, absolutely. Uh, especially with people who are not sure about something or or um, have just been exposed to something that they're not uh, familiar with. Um, it's always my pleasure to help them, to show them, to um, share some of my knowledge, uh, some of the things that I have learned, some of the do's, some of the don'ts, and right. uh, just, uh, you know, hopefully uh, get them on their way. Absolutely. Right, right. One thing I want to ask you is your perspectives on, on the plating industry and the finishing industry in general. I mean, many, many decades you've been involved, and I'm sure it's much different now than what it was when you were first involved. How have you seen the biggest changes? Uh, what have been the, the, the most, uh, uh, you know, the most change, uh, difference of changes that you've seen since, uh, you know, when you first started? Well, Tim, I've seen a couple of uh, uh, what I feel are pretty big changes. Uh, number one, the uh, industry has certainly um, um, become smaller mm -hmm. or it uh, condensed, so, right. uh, so to speak. Uh, some, some of the metal finishing operations have either gone out of business or been sold. Um, and also from the supplier's perspective, uh, many of the smaller, the mid-sized suppliers have been uh, purchased by larger companies. Mm -hmm. And so you have uh, less of both. But what I see that really has changed is, since I spent so many years on the supplier side, mm -hmm. I have seen is that um, we need to see more people getting into the industry with a good chemical education, but right. to stay in the industry, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, what I could say is uh, th this is not a clean industry. This is not a desk job. This is not something that you sit in the computer. This is a job where you actually are hands-on. And the hands-on mm -hmm. could be very, very challenging for those who want to learn. If you want to learn, you can go a long way in this industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can see where, uh, you know, that's going to be a challenge, you know, from both ends. But I can see especially, you know what makes me really happy? Mm -hmm. To see some of my customers were uh, the younger generation 
takes an active role in the operation and the right. ownership of the company. Because that's wonderful. Because they want to take it to a new higher plateau. It reminds me of Fred Gum, the late Fred Gum, mm -hmm. who took the company over from his father, John. He didn't just maintain the company. He grew the company to, a high, right. uh, to larger heights, which is great. And uh, that's really what, uh, you know, I like to see, you know, going on in the industry. Because our industry, um, I think maybe we have 100,000 people in the North America involved, perhaps, in our industry. Right. And um, we might be responsible for maybe at least 15, 20 percent of the gross domestic product. Mm. And I think one of the main reasons that we all have a job is because of corrosion. Right. Corrosion is <laughs> not going anywhere. It's always going to be with us. Right. And uh, corrosion... I think I think it's safe to say it probably costs this country trillions of dollars a year. So right. whatever we can do to fight corrosion, to improve the surface wear characteristics of parts, come up with new types of finishes that uh, meet the, meet the ever growing demands that industry has, that's the way to go. That's right. what we have to do. Right. You mentioned the, you're seeing a lot of younger uh, people involved in some of the companies that you visit and get involved in and everything. What uh, what advice would you give, looking back and what you learned, what advice would you give someone now who's just kind of getting started in the industry? I know you said there's lots of promise for somebody who really wants to stick with it, but what advice would you give those type of, of, of people? Make sure you don't make the mistake I made for the first couple of years. Keep your mouth shut and listen. That was a mistake that I had made. A couple of people reminded me about that. It took me a little while, but I, I think I fixed that problem. Uh, the second issue is don't be afraid of working longer hours. Sometimes mm. that's what it takes to get things done and to learn more and to be successful and to be appreciated by those that you're doing the work for. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's great advice. Like I said, sometimes people uh, look at it, and I think early on you can afford it, like you said, spend some extra time with that, but also, like you said, of just kind of absorbing everything you're seeing and hearing and and, and, and not so much, you know, just kind of taking it in because it is a, a, a almost a classroom out there, uh, right? When you're, like you said, you're still learning, right? You're still seeing Absolutely. things and learning. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so looking back in your career, like I said, sum it up. And I, again, you, you write a lot of things for our publication. I really do appreciate that. They're very much read by the people. Uh, they're very good advice. And things like that. I appreciate that. But uh, looking back over your career, like I said, you're not done yet. You've got a lot more uh, going and you've got, you know, f at least 40 customers who need you probably a lot more. But uh, give me kind of a respective uh, look back of your career, uh, of, of everything that you've done and every place that you've been. So, Well, I think I, you know, I was saying to myself, it's almost like uh, waiting at the bus stop and deciding mm -hmm. to take the Metal Finishing Express. And the Metal <laughs> Finishing Express over the years, believe it or not, it's taken me to some very, very interesting stops. Mm -hmm. I've gotten off, but I remember to get back on and to keep traveling. And uh, wow. all I can say is that, uh, you know, it's a wonderful country to work in, and the opportunities are there. Believe me, for anyone who wants to do some work and advance and listen and learn, you're going to be successful because you're going to be needed. People are going to see what you have and what mm -hmm. you can produce. And uh, uh, the industry has been fantastic to me, Tim. I mean, mm -hmm. every stop along the way, it's been a joy. It's been a, a great learning experience. And it enabled me to go out on my own because I mm -hmm. said to myself, in my career, what else do I want to do? Well, I'd like to try something on my own, see what I can do, how can I work with people, and this is where I am right now. Great, great. Well, that's a very good summation. Again, I appreciate you taking time out uh, for talking with us, and um, we, we will check in with you soon. But, again, thanks, Stephen, for joining us today. Tim, thank you so much. It was a, it was a pleasure. I appreciate it.